So, this devil then, and because we can't, now that we've <laughs> arrived at, at that doorway, I don't think we can turn away. Uh, I mean, you said you on on this uh, podcast I listened to yesterday it was about um, well you made a correspondence similar to the one I just made between researching uh, conspiratorial elements of of existence with uh, studying the nature of evil mm -hmm. and you said that the human mind was not capable of contemplating evil contemplating thank you evil uh, which I don't uh -huh. yeah. well I found that as interesting as a I guess as a challenge I would say that well, this is an interesting paradox also uh, I guess I find everything interesting I should stop using that word um, but there's a paradox there because I don't I don't use the, the word evil as a descriptor. I will use the word because people talk about evil and they use it, so I'll talk about it in mm -hmm. that me meta sense, as in what do people mm -hmm. mean when they say evil. But I don't use it personally, uh, certainly not as a noun, po possibly as an adjective once in a while. If so. I, I tend to use it in a jokey way, like some movie I saw was evil or what have you, because um, I, I, it's an absolutist term. Right, so and I, I try to stay away from absolutist mm -hmm. terms, um, but on the other hand, paradoxes is, is that I would say that uh, m you know most of my writing and now podcasting has been directed towards contemplating the nature of evil, essentially, mm -hmm. which is human, the human capacity for delusion, for darkness, for. Uh, I could give you a whole bunch of synonyms. I could tell you what I think evil is, um, but actually, what occurred to me today, I was knowing I was going to talk to you, is that that what I'm exploring, what I hope I'm exploring, is is the the root cause of evil, mm -hmm. which um, <laughs> I imagine is. I mean, for for a Catholic, it's the devil. But then, uh, at least for a non for a secular person. I don't know if I'm secular, but I'm certainly non-Christian. The question mm -hmm. then is, what's the root cause of the devil? Like, where did the devil come from? And I'm not going to ask you that question because I know that you can't answer it. But um, I guess, um, what do I want to say here? The um, what we were talking about earlier, or I was rather, um, about how delusion. Well, you 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 touched on it. How how delusion can become real if we if we go all the way into it. I forget the exact mm -hmm. words that you used. Um, and and I answered by saying about how um, whole systems of belief and correspondences can be generated over time by human beings if they persist in belief, which is a little bit close to, of course, you know, Kekism Kek and chaos magic and whatnot. But whatever the case, mm -hmm. um, I think there's plenty of evidence for this. You know, if people believe something for long enough, and that then they act on it, then it assumes a certain kind of reality, if only internally in their own minds, in the way that they perceive reality. So um, that is my sense about uh, the devil. The there is something. I mean, there is a metaphysical dimension to our existence, and it, it, it's the greater one because it, it, it corres not corresponds with, but it leads into the eternal, what is eternal. And um, we could say the soul. I mean, you and I might agree about that. I do suspect yeah. there is such thing as an eternal soul. Um, and the... Uh, I forgot what I was saying, actually. What was I saying? Uh, the metaphysical, right. So there is a metaphysical dimension to human experience, and that includes, you know, the worst aspects. So, you know, evil act, acts of evil, destructive acts. Um, and that um, there is... Uh, I mean, like, I have encountered, admittedly in dreams and, you know, on drugs, so I don't necessarily trust... I certainly don't trust the drug experiences, but... The dream ones I might trust more. I, I would say I've encountered um, a presence or a force or intelligence that 
would be very easily easy to assume was was the devil and i i'm pretty sure if i were to encounter it now i would be convinced that it was the devil but i don't actually believe that like i think that there is another way to see that and understand it and what i'm getting to if this is i don't know what it is a question or just a proposition that um mm -hmm. it, devil and god that's a dichotomy well and if i'm going to go with that then i have to see that the devil came after god so so for me my understanding of evil is is fragmentation and my understanding of good is wholeness and by that definition you know, evil only exists as a fragment um, and when wholeness is achieved then then that's it and and before fragmentation occurs that's also it that there is no evil now i don't want this to be a platitude or anything i'm i'm hope, hoping to describe something that's experiential like i I do experience my own capacity for evil and I know that it's there and I do experience this metaphysical dimension to evil and of course I research evil on a daily basis or what anyone uh -huh. else pretty much would consider to be evil um, but I still feel like the universe or existence, reality is, um, is all one. <laughs> Again, I didn't uh -huh. want to end on a platitude but that there is a wholeness, there is an integrity to existence, and for a Catholic that would be God, that would be the divine. Um, anyway, this is, it's getting very philosophical, but I, I guess, as with David, when I was talking to David, like there's so much agreement there, and then there's this basic, it's not, it doesn't have to be a disagreement, because we don't have to disagree, but it's a, it's a very divergent perspective. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, well, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, well, to say that uh, that uh, I don't know that evil is a privation of good or or falling apart of the from the whole. That's pretty much sound uh, metaphysical description of theology of devil. I would say that that's not superficial at all. But uh, this uh, what I, what you mentioned that I said that human mind cannot. Comp contemplate evil. I didn't mean cannot receive search, I meant cannot contemplate, and contemplate would mean uh, to grasp its essence. And in grasping the essence of a thing, a mind becomes the thing. Uh, this is, I think that this is not in nature of human by mind, because the nature of human mind is to look for for good. And one sign of this you can see in, 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 in people who are historical personages who are considered to be evil. And when you look at their uh, tastes, what they like, what music they liked, what movies they, they watched, uh, what books they read, uh, they were not, uh, for instance, they were rooting, uh, watching a movie, rooting for a good guy and so on and so forth. Right. That's one illustration. Uh, I've met, uh, I haven't met a lot of real evil people, two or three maybe in my life. But their communication with other people is in the guise of good. Because mm. uh, they, they, uh, they are, uh, and, and what I want to say, nobody will uh, come look you in the eyes and say, I want to do injustice because I love injustice. I love to tear the to rape a small uh, prepubescent child and then tear him limb to limb. This is something uh, this is something you, you, you just don't meet. Although you have people who will do something like that in the war or 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 in, in such such a situation. And they all suffer most of them will suffer from post traumatic disorder afterwards because their conscience will try to start to torture them. Some won't, but those are, in my opinion and in my experience, rather rare. And uh, that podcast you mentioned was about, uh, was based on experience one my friend had mm -hmm. uh, who was researching this uh, Franklin cover up uh, famous pedophile case. And what happened to him? I know what happened to him. Uh, he was researching, researching, and then he started to contemplate. Mm -hmm. He had, a, uh, in the middle of the night, he had a vision of what he is getting into. And he was completely emotionally and, and even physically devastated for days. Because there is 
obviously something in us, not only in mind, but uh, we are talking about mind, but, so I'll, I'll stick to that, in our thinking, in our mentality, that really cannot contemplate evil in condensed form. We started this conversation uh, 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 with Bataille and radical ideas uh, from people like Bataille, who then infiltrate, uh, for instance, hypothetically, mainstream society. Now we can ask ourselves, why do they have to infiltrate it? And they always did have to infiltrate it. No matter how bad society was, you just couldn't come up with an idea that enlightenment can be gained only through trauma. Through, uh, trauma is a septic word, word. He would have to say you can have enlightenment only by picking your eyes out or, or, or I don't know, beating somebody to a pulp mm. and laughing about it. And then we have we come full circle. It is obvious uh, that uh, that uh, at least it is obvious to me, and I think it can be demonstrated that the normal state of man, e man's intellect and and will and then emotion emotionality is always uh, directed towards uh, to the opposite of evil, and that's why. Uh, but it is not conscious, it is not very intense people, we are all weak and so on and so forth. But uh, I think I think evil evil is very good to prove the existence of good because it good, uh, good uh, simply you see that uh, uh, the, the, the good uh, the necessity of the existence of good because evil is a parasite. It, it's a parasi parasitic existence. To, to give you an example, uh, when somebody say that to to get back to this Batal's idea of uh, of uh, traumatic uh, traumatizing yourself to enlightenment, this idea could not dawn on him. This is my opinion. If there wasn't idea of enlightenment through ascent, mm -hmm. uh, through moral purification or intellectual or spiritual, uh, uh, he just took the opposite of something already existing. And this is, in my opinion, parasitical idea. Although people like that guy, who was, I think, from what I saw, he had this authentic evil bent. They believe that they are touching to something primordial, something that is, uh, that, that the real nature of man is grasped when you turn your gaze below, not above. Mm -hmm. Not try to ascend, but try to descend. And this is this is the core. Now we have we have come full circle because this is what I meant. For instance, in that podcast you mentioned at the beginning, and uh, this is the idea. Th this is the nexus of ideas I research. This these directions of up and down. Uh, can you can you judge an idea by the way uh, where where it uh, mm, uh, directs your focus, you know, and so on. Mm -hmm. I hope I, I made sense with <laughs> this. It, it does. A bit um, abstract. It does. Uh, I, I mean, I, <laughs> in part of what I described as my lifelong interest or uh, will to immerse in darkness, uh, you know, as a, as a researcher, um, is that, uh, or, or let's say that in recent years I've begun to understand that fixation better as a need to mm -hmm. um, go down <laughs> before I can go up so the obvious uh, metaphor mm -hmm. is, is, is of a tree that it has to put those roots in it can't start growing until the roots go in now that's a romantic metaphor I'm not a tree okay but, that's, yeah mm -hmm. um, no I think it's an apt metaphor it's, it's a perfectly fine and natural natural thing I think to to, 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 to think this way yeah uh, uh, what I was talking about were people who are don't want to put roots in the ground uh, those are people who want to dig the ground and to 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 kind of uh, to dig into matter 
into mud of matter completely with no spirit and then dissolve the matter itself to come to nothing to come to opposite of what is highest and this is the way of thinking this is this is satanism this is i would say uh, philosophical satanism because satanism proper in my opinion is uh, regularly tied with religion so you have uh, for instance, uh, at least in theory, satanic mass uh, is performed by some defrocked Catholic or maybe Orthodox, uh, Eastern Orthodox priest, somebody who was consecrated and now he is desecrating. Uh, this philosophical satanism, you don't need no church for that. And for instance, those order of nine angles uh, ideas are precisely uh, most radical expression of this what I'm talking about. Because this is the idea of reaching the A-causal. An a causal realm mm. would be that which is not uh, pure, which is pure chaos. In fact, there is no causal relations, and out of that manifests the causal world. And they always strive to go to the a causal because they see it as an infinite power. It is unbridled by anything else. There is no causal chains where something is bigger or smaller this is complete darkness mm -hmm. and I think and I think this idea uh, this kind of, this orientation towards below is is very very pronounced even in in, in a mainstream uh, mainstream Western societies with with teachings like Darwinism with uh, even with with Marxism, especially in its radical forms, this idea that you have to, in in some way, found uh, the 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 lowest common common denominator of man and 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 reduce man to to uh, to practically material being. But what is interesting is that they go uh, not Marxist, but this Sotonist in in the vein of I think Battaglia was one of them. I'm not sure, but for instance, David Mayat, Order of the Nine Angles, Alexander Dugin, they definitely, and uh, they usually define themselves as a left-hand path. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is they, uh, their objective, to grasp into absolute below. That is absolute opposite of uh, light, causality, uh, beauty, truth. They see truth in that. And... Uh, for instance, you have my mainstream philosophers like Martin Heidegger, who is extremely influential in, in academia in the West, not in Britain. Uh, we can, he never gained ground uh, with, with, with your countrymen for some reason, but in continental Europe and America, Heidegger is still one of the most influential thinkers of 20th century. Heidegger's philosophy is, is completely, completely uh, this thing I'm talking about. But well yeah. disguised, I think. Or I don't know about well, but yes. disguised anyway. Yes, I don't know. Have you ever read him? But he's very difficult. He's especially if you if you if you are uh, anglophone, uh, it's very very hard to understand him. I haven't read him, but I I, I got a I think I shoplifted. I'm glad to say a copy <laughs> for my sister because she was studying existential <laughs> psychology and it was on her reading list. So and uh -huh. so so it it is he is somewhat influential in in, in Britain even. Um, and she seemed to, I, I think she did say it was hard to understand, but I think she also got uh, things from it that she found, you know, positive and benevolent. Uh, so recently I've been talking to somebody who's very uh, down on Heidegger, Gary, Gary Haidt, mm -hmm. and um, so he's he's kind of introduced me to to the perspective that you have on Heidegger there. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted well, uh, to, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Please, please continue. I'll always. Uh, no, I, I wanted to go back to Bataille um, mm -hmm. and this whole downward thing, because and the left-hand path, and you know, because I, you know, I was on the left-hand path for a long time. I did a lot of drugs and doing. Well, actually, I, I did actually end up doing things I didn't even realize I was doing, but um, I, I can't just sum them up too quickly because they'd need context, but. You know, it was nothing too horrific and it's nothing I wouldn't talk about but anyway mm -hmm. I was on the left hand path as a magician or cultist I didn't do ritual magic much but basically um, and um, 
I understood it partially as you know a, a, a lead up for the right hand path first you do the left hand that's in Castaneda first you got to learn about mm -hmm. the dark arts and then you move on etc so you know my point of view now is is neither the left hand or the right hand path is is any good I don't see them as you know one good one bad I see them as two sides mm -hmm. of the same thing and I would say the same about this upward and downward thing I mean this is my experience I'm not necessarily addressing what you perceive just what you said that uh, um, it's 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 to do with the will to power and there's yes that mm -hmm. the the people who are going downward they're driven by the will to power but then so are the people who many of the people who are seemingly aspiring upward or at least espousing the values about you know upward values this is what I was saying about the 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 weird conflation or congruence between not just left and right but but nihilism and spirituality or whatever we would say is the apparent opposite of nihilism um, that they're actually bedfellows uh, like the will to power will use whatever it has to um, and so specifically bringing back to specifics like Jeffrey Kripal the thing that this article he wrote about Bataille, what I do remember one of the things I really zeroed in on on that first chapter of Prisoner of Infinity was he used the example of the Hearn, the Hadron Collider um, and uh, how it was necessary to smash matter to get you know, uh -huh. to the smallest particle in order to discover you know the true nature of existence so he was using an example of how violence is necessary in order to attain truth and enlightenment um, which is exactly what I was confronting him about and exactly uh -huh. what you're zeroing in on there uh, from the scientific Absolutely. perspective Digile Chashu Spustile Nebo Videlue Zato Lima Chisto Srce Yeah. 
You sure. have this in post posthumanism. This is definitely uh, the, the same idea in many forms. I would agree completely on this. Yeah. So, and what the co one correspondence I make, or the yeah, the correspondence I made in Prisoner Infinity was between this, what Kripal was advocating, in this you know seemingly benign, uh, culturally progressive disguise because it's science right and they're just atoms so who you know uh -huh. it's not it's it's you know it's 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 innocuous violence um but on the other hand he's promoting somebody like Whitley Strieber who was a you know a victim of MK Ultra who was psychically traumatized as an infant raped and tortured and who knows what exactly because he doesn't remember it and that that um, allowed him to access these dissociative realms in which he supposedly had an experience of the visitors and you know that led to this massive industry of alien abduction literature so mm -hmm. the obvious correspondence there between smashing matter with a hadron collider and hacking into the psyche uh, through trauma through violence through ritualized organized abuse of children um, and I think that's what you're touching on, whether the, the, the attempt is to access this a-causal realm mm -hmm. where um, it's possible to shape reality. I mean, it's not reality, but it, it creates a surrogate of reality, it seems. I mean, that, would, that, that seems to be, I don't want to say the goal, but that seems to be um, part of what you're describing, I think. Yes, I think it's 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 a will uh, to recreate uh, a reality at will because uh, the, the, I think the real motive in this breaking it breaking apart atoms, for instance, which is by the way a pretty mainstream way of thinking. Come to think of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and this, for instance, in in order of the nine angles, when they mentally and by some exercises and by political terrorism they want to bring about to to invoke chaos, uh, is an attempt uh, to remodel society, to to remodel oneself, because you break. Idea is that you have to break everything up and then remold it at will and you are some kind of uh, yeah. I, uh, some kind of, 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 of pure ego because this is this is the philosophy of ego uh, pure pure egoism yeah. and isolation uh, right, right. and uh, aspiring towards upwards uh, traditionally not only in uh, revealed religions but in Pagan metaphysics as Neoplatonism, Platonism, which is, in my opinion, a proper compendium of ancient Greek philosophy. The idea never was that going upwards means that you are climbing upwards, but that that which abodes upwards uh, gives you an act of mercy. Uh, this is even in philosophy, for instance, in Platonic philosophy, uh, the knowledge of this higher... Uh, let's say, uh, higher and at the same time more sublime and more interior uh, reality is, uh, is, is a gift bestowed upon thinker who is mentally focused on this, who is, who is doing a kind of mental prayer, one could say. Uh, and uh, my point is uh, that uh, by going this road, you have to uh, renounce idea that you as a human being will ever be at the top of creation that you will be that you will ever be anything else than you already are you mm. can only uh, you can uh, you will be uplifted you will be better and you will be loved for instance uh, but w not by your own uh, your own efforts you can't accomplish this you are always under something which is better than you but better in, in every sense, not in, not primarily in a sense of power, but in a sense of love, for instance, mm -hmm. in a sense of intellect, in Platonism. Whereas uh, these guys, uh, these modern Satanists, because they are very modern, this is very modern outlook, by going in th into this causal are doing opposites. They are trying to deify themselves, in fact, I would say. Yeah.
Post-humanism is well, post-humanism. For instance, this what what what's his name? That that famous Google engineer now, uh, Ray Kurzweil. Yeah. Well, he's he's a typical typical example of that pitiful postmodern God. He he wants to be God. He wants to store all of his memories on on hard disks or something because of course his memory is failing him as he is getting old. And he probably doesn't want let go. And the only, I, I remember reading his Singularity is uh, near book, and it is it is patently obvious from that book that that man is so horrified of dying mm-hmm. that that he uh, he cannot uh, he cannot imagine a world without himself, and he cannot he cannot cope uh, with losing power and control. And this is terrible. This is this is really uh, really really a, a most uh, in 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 my perspective uh, the most degrading idea that man ever came up with this techno post humanism <laughs> this idea of turning people into cyborgs and uh, <laughs> robots. Yeah, I would I would I would agree. It's ironically, I'm I'm actually talking to a transhuman advocate tomorrow. Um, <laughs> not, yeah. not exactly looking forward to it, but I, as a, as a case study, I mean, it's it's quite hard to 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 find one that it's possible to have a conversation with, because I think it's so mm-hmm. profoundly disconnected from from reality. Yes, <laughs> yes precisely. Um, you can you, yeah, you can't relate to them. No, no, <laughs> yeah. and it's it's very difficult to know what kind of language to use or what to refer to um, to refute a delusion of that sort um, mm-hmm. I, I was, and it has to be experiential of course and I mean I, I can look at my own trajectory and although I was never so mentally deluded if that's not tautology, that's probably tautology isn't it, but anyway uh, I, I was not, never so deluded to believe in something like transhumanism, I was very very deluded enough to know I mean I can see it enough now to know that I must probably still be pretty deluded today as well, you know but at least I can see that you know, to some extent the delusion I was in back then um, and mm-hmm. my, you know, my, my journey from out of delusion, which is not complete needless to say um, but has gone on long enough that I can at least see a see a you know a course that I've been on. Uh, very much has been out of the mind and into the body. So for me, the the um, it's interesting because we've been talking about the mind quite a lot, and you're saying how the mind can't contemplate evil, and I don't know if I disagree or I don't know what I think about that except that I think that the mind essentially can't really contemplate anything in a way I mean like, like it can't um, essentially you said that how about if it, if it really contemplates something it, it becomes identified with it, it becomes it um, but anyway I'm not sure if I have anything to say about that but the um, was something I, I said to my brother when he was alive, he died in 2010, I've written about him, and he was a, you could say he was a Satanist, although he turned it into mm-hmm. a joke, and he was not a religious, but he, he was a bit of a pioneer, you could say, or a prototype of this, the new kind of neoliberal Satanist, uh, or I don't know if I should even call it that, because as you point out, it's left and right, but anyway, the, the secular Satanist. Um, anyway, I said to him that it's not death of the body that's frightening, it's death of the mind. And uh, he, he understood and he agreed about that. And talking to you now, I, what occurs to me is, is that the body isn't afraid of dying unless it, it's confronted with something in nature that might kill it. Then, it, of course, it has adrenaline to, mm-hmm. you know, fuel it to make its escape. But in terms of a reality in the future, the body doesn't care less, and in terms of when it's actually happening, if there's nothing the body can do anymore, nothing we can do anymore, then the body, I believe, just relaxes. I remember Livingston, not David, the other, well actually it is David Livingston, mm-hmm. but the other one, the famous one, yeah, he, he was attacked by a lion and he said that 
he was in the jaws of the lion and he, his body just became completely relaxed and it was a, almost a euphoric experience well I don't know if that's true or not but it makes sense to me that the body once it can no longer defy death uh, surrenders submits to mm -hmm. it and there, there isn't we're not programmed to fear death I don't think not not by nature I think we're programmed by culture if that's not another tautology because culture is a kind of programming but anyway we've we've been encultured in such a way that <clears throat> we've been able to um, create a separate existence like in this sense I guess we're all uh, Satanists living in an a causal realm you know of our mental cultured constructed self which um, not only can fear death but it it it's kind of, it's almost made of a fear of death like you know everything that we um, believe in and create as mental distractions and uh, pursuits and all the rest of it seems to me that it's largely geared as a buffer against the uh, idea of death S so in this sense like I, you know, I wrote about Ray Kurzweil in uh, Prisoner Infinity even though I, I find it so distasteful even to read anything he says you know I just cannot relate <laughs> but I can relate to fear you know the fear of the de fear of death I do I do I do experience that on a daily basis just thinking about it um, so anyway this is not leading necessarily to an opening for, for you but um, I guess that uh, um, the de yeah, the desire to transcend, uh, and the desire to create this um, perfect ego. Uh, that's that's a that seems to be a desire simply to tra to transcend the body. I mean, obviously to transcend death, but to transcend physicality. And I think you were saying, at least I would say this, that we can't, we can't transcend physicality. Yes.
it is part of us. We can't transcend, at least by our own efforts, no. our finitude. Yeah. Uh, we are finite, finite, and uh, I think those people like Kurzweil and uh, he, uh, I agree, is, it is a very distasteful idea. He's trying to transcend the body by more perfect body, more coarse body, yeah. to make it eternal in the chrome and metal. Yeah. This is unbelievably crude, barbarous, even uh, to to even to even come to this idea. Yeah. So, so that's why I, why I consider posthumanism to be uh, uh, probably the the, the 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 most depraved uh, depraved idea current now. Uh. <laughs> well, but they have. I mean, again, like you're saying about Keck and and, and that whole audience cult. These transhumanists, they do have a uh, a lot of raw material for their fantasy because I imagine that you know my transhumanist friend would answer that by saying no 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 I'm going to become the cloud you know and that's non-physical mm -hmm. so it's so yeah there's this idea that actually we're using technology to transcend technology that that yeah that, yeah, yeah yeah that we're tapping into the metaphysical realm through these physical means which I think there is some truth in that but the problem is, is that, uh, well, I'm not sure how to sum up the problem. I think you already did. Like, we can't do it by our own effort. Mm -hmm. So all no, we're going no. to do is create, uh, we're creating hell, I think, essentially. Like, the more effective we can be in terms of transcending the physicality, the more disembodied we become, the more lost, lost we're going to be. Yes, yes, yes. Although I, I do think that posthumanism, uh, it's 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 more like artistic intellectual movement. They do have some inroads in in politics and so on, but mm. uh, I, I don't think that, that anything will come out of it eventually. Uh, I mean, okay, I wouldn't like to now to go into that. This is a broad subject. I, for instance, I subsume in posthumanism many things not on, only this avant-garde posthumanists who believe in this merging with machines I consider uh, for instance alt-right in many senses posthumanist because for instance they are supposed traditionalist and they believe that they can imagine Donald Trump into, a, into presidential office uh, by using internet mm. uh, I mean that, that's also posthumanist to me uh, yeah. And they don't dream about merging with machines. At least, not all of them. They have some some specimens uh, promoting this idea. But uh, yes, I think I, I think it is it is it is it is a really a really uh, extremely depraved uh, depraved system of thought. And what you said uh, uh, earlier, it is very hard to relate to those people. And this is only the sign of the isolation. Uh, into which they are putting themselves right. by this idea, because uh, this is idea of complete isolation, isolation and yeah. e e egoism. So, I'm yeah. sorry, I can um, <laughs> apologize to all posthumanists listening to this. I can't find <laughs> nice words for for them. I don't think I have. Uh, any posthumanist <laughs> listeners that would be yeah. very strange well I have this one who I'm speaking to tomorrow and I have to ask him like why do you even like what I do because uh, <laughs> I, I want to find out you know, I may be doing something wrong there um, but referring to your um, point about it not going anywhere I mean I would agree in terms of it's just a dead end by definition and then add to that that uh, uh, resources probably aren't going to support it and many of these these tech heads they don't even consider the fact that the power outlet won't work if if you know the economic <laughs> system collapses or if oil runs out they just yeah. see there's a power outlet right and it's always going to be there kind of thing they don't think that far ahead um so and that that is the case with delusional uh you know systems of belief that they're as back to this isolation that they're um, hermetically mm -hmm. sealed and they don't they're not allowed to refer to reality of course because they couldn't survive it um, but you know as a counterpoint 
Uh, yeah, I read about transgender recently, and one of the reasons it interests me is, is that it intersects at very um, specific points very clearly with transhumanism, post-humanism, post-gender. Um, as an ideology, uh, this is one that is, is more mainstream than transhumanism, and uh -huh. it's certainly been very effective in terms of, um, you know, taking hold, as in people support it without understanding it so uh, I think you know bringing back to a point you made very early on like most people are not gonna read this order of nine angles guy and go out and sacrifice a human being although who knows with the coming mm -hmm. generations but just that they will take on that idea and give it some credence because of the context it's put in mm -hmm. is going to colonize them and, and dissociate them further from their own inner sense of what's true then I, I think that that's more what we're looking at, that these ideas like transhuman, transhumanism and transgenderism even more so, I think is very powerful in that regard. Yeah, yeah precisely, because it's always this, uh, this uh, dichotomy and relation of uh, uh, core idea, which is completely extreme, and this idea that can be appropriated slowly by public and transgenderism is transhumanism for me that I don't see any any real uh, difference uh, because this is the idea that you can change your own nature at will and that you can change it from the outside because every techno technical um, act uh, you you do on yourself is is uh, is in a way uh, the act coming from outside. You'll need the surgeons to do work on you. You'll need uh, the whole system of technology to to turn you into exactly what you want to be. That cloud or something like that. Mm. And this this makes you uh, completely unfree. If you look at I mean metaphysically unfree. This, yeah. this cuts. Yeah, cuts cuts every every possibility of of uh, freedom, which is a paradox because they crave absolute freedom to recreate themselves, and yeah. by doing this they reject <laughs> they reject freedom absolutely. Yeah. But for some reason they don't see it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and that's a, there's a real double think entail there, particularly in terms mm -hmm. of uh, so much of this being promoted on the so-called left, because as you're pointing out the more that you subscribe to these kind of ideological promises mm -hmm. of freedom, the more dependent you're becoming on the state and the establishment and the drugs and big pharma and military research and all the things that anyone with any, you know, semblance of awareness knows is, is fucked, you know, is, is, is a really limited option and a really bad setup for human beings. So, and I guess you're pointing that out with the, with the, uh, with the um, alt right, that that paradox there, mm -hmm. that they're supposedly about getting back to nature. I mean, maybe not literally, but they they want traditional values to be reestablished and so on. And, and they have my sympathy that way. I, I wouldn't say I want traditional values because I think they predate tradition. But I wouldn't mind getting back to the Garden of Eden. You know, I can understand that. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but but so they want that, whatever the equivalent is. But on the other hand, um, they're uh, dependent on these, you know, different technologies and and so on and so forth that are completely at odds with uh, the values that they're supposedly espousing. So I mean, I don't like that. That seems to me in itself an example of what we're talking about in terms of being internally colonized you know, by bad ideas, that that could leads to fragmentation or that intensifies, uh, you know, mm -hmm. fragmentation of, of the psyche or the soul or whatever word you would put on that, on, on a person's interior space. It gets compartmentalized. Yes, we always uh, return to this, to that idea. And I think this is, this is something that is very... Uh, hmm. Uh, very prevalent uh, in our time, especially if you, as I said at the outset, if you are if you are in the world of internet, because internet is a very good medium from promulgation of this sort of uh, mental viruses. And I would I would agree uh, with you. Uh, there are many 
uh, hmm, many versions of many many uh, forms of this phenomena. I would not go into it now. For instance, I already mentioned Dugin and so on. But you have networks of uh, depravity on internet and uh, the mental depravity and uh, that that are slowly coming from the fringe towards the center. They are try they are starting to influence uh, mainstream society. And this is how it goes. So how will it end? Who knows? Mm -hmm. So that well, was interesting. The point you made about the internet. Uh, well, the more we identify with the avatar, with our internet persona, which of course you and I have, uh -huh. we do our podcasts and our blogs and whatnot, um, the more susceptible we become to infiltration by internet uh -huh. spread memes, what have you. I guess because, uh -huh. I mean, you said it in a specific way, but I'm thinking also maybe it was what you said, that we become, uh, we're made of the same stuff. It's like we start swimming yeah. in that water, then we start you know, drinking it as well. We get, we become constituted, more and more sympathetic, I guess, mm -hmm. to the medium. This is why I don't use, well, I do use Facebook, but I always use it with great reluctance because Facebook is an internet within the internet and it's very yes. clear how it creates its own context for communication and it, and it, it transforms people's awareness, you know, how they see themselves and they become faceborged. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I noticed uh, Facebook is very interesting because I noticed that there are some people who are not the same people when they are on the Facebook as they are in real life because I know them in real life. And uh, paradoxically enough, uh, they can get uh, much more intimate about themselves on Facebook than in real life. Mm. This is really, which is which is really uh, a lunacy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> for all the world to see their inner, inner mental and emotional states, and kind, they want to kind of break, break about it. Uh, I think uh, Facebook can drag these uh, narcissistic tendencies in yeah. people to the fore. Yeah, yeah. well I think it, I mean now you're saying that, I think it has to do with, like we all want to be validated and feel that we have value, mm -hmm. and it's very scary if you share really personal stuff and it gets rejected, well Facebook accepts everything, like it's run by corporations yeah. who are taking that data and using it for their own corporate ends, so basically you know <laughs> your intimate stuff is going to be useful. You know, it's the most mm -hmm. cynical and the most kind of debasing use of it, but at least you know that it's going to be liked, literally. You'll get those clicks mm -hmm. and you'll feel okay. So that's really, yeah, that's it's pretty grisly to mm. think about. The people are, well, I guess, yeah, so dissociated, but also so desperate to feel like they're being received. And then Facebook... And so this brings about that question of, you know, is it a conspiracy or is it happening? And, you know, I've, for quite a, a time now, I've juxtaposed the word complicity with the word conspiracy. And I say, you know, it's both, mm -hmm. but it's more, it's more about complicity because we are um, complicit with the conspiracy. Therefore, it's, there is a conspiracy, yeah, but it's not an us and them. There isn't a clear dividing line because it only exists through our mm -hmm. complicity with it. So then it's so much deeper and wider than than even you know David Icke and his crew to ever ever really allow for. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. I I think that this this clear cut idea of some kind of uh, evil elite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good nature messes that that's 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 completely ahistorical and and and, and a counter to common sense. It's more about complicity uh, with the lowest uh, aspects of human nature than any than with anything else. Yeah, and yeah. that see that gives rise to a system in which those who most embody their lowest nature have the most power and influence. So then you do end up, I think, with a with 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 the machinery of conspiracy, but it's it's like mm -hmm. before that was was us. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it had to come from somewhere. I guess this is where I have a problem with the devil because I I want I I want to, and I think it is possible to for the buck to stop with us. 
like we can I think we can trace all of the world's evil to to ourselves and what we've done to ourselves mm -hmm. without passing the buck on some metaphysical entity even though we may have created a metaphysical entity I think we have but I still think before that was us yeah no I, I don't think that that we are the origin of this I understand why 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 you have this idea but I don't I don't think it 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 really no not because uh, it can explain maybe you can explain everything with that but <laughs> until the moment maybe you'll meet him in in your life god forbid well like I, I, think I said that yeah, was, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean I have had that experience and if I have it again I will change my mind <laughs> when, <laughs> when I'm faced with it but <laughs> You know, there are many things I've experienced that later I was able to see, oh, that was just me in some sense. That was an aspect mm -hmm. of me. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, let's say I, I keep it open. I, I, I try to keep that open, uh -huh. that question. Do you know um, René Girard? I know who he, who he is, but I never read him. He's a theology of sacrifice, is it not? Uh, yeah, violence and the sacred mimetic violence, uh, the scapegoat mechanism. Very interesting. And he, he's, he was a Catholic. He converted to Catholicism, yeah, which I know. Might, might interest uh -huh. you. And um, I think his his work is very has been very useful to me, anyway, in terms of understanding, again, you know, what's deeper than conspiracy, uh, which in, in terms of like basic socio-psychological principles that that can be applied, I see it as like a lever. And if you if you discover this lever within the human psyche and within human uh, you know, uh -huh. society, then uh, then you, you it's very it takes very little pressure on one end to create enormous change on the other, and so that does allow for things like social engineering that. Uh, are not the way that we understand them in terms of conspiracy theory and people pl mapping it all out. It's, it more relates to basic principles of human existence which, if they are understood, can be applied and then they cause enormous kind of effects. Um, but anyway, mm -hmm. Girard is... I, I would recommend him if, if, you, if you are interested in those sorts of things, those kind of anthropological writings, because he's... I think he was quite a 
pioneer in mm -hmm. terms of mm -hmm. creating new 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 models for understanding. Yeah, I'll give him give him a look. Probably I know I know about him, but but never read him. I I don't tend to read uh, the modern uh, modern theology. Although he's more an anthropologist, I think. Uh, uh, but I I will I will probably probably put him on my schedule, which is <laughs> rather rather um, overpopulated with books uh, because uh, for 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 the work I do besides the work I do in real life uh, I really have to study a lot. So I started to 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 make some kind of a system to make a schedule for books for documents and so on, so I don't get lost in all of that. I cover a lot of subject, subjects. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that was my impression. Um, I was glad. And that's to not necessarily good. <laughs> uh, well, only you would know that, I guess. I mean, I I found it yeah. quite difficult to get into what you were doing, but not that I, you know, it hasn't been very long. But within the first week or two of reading it, I was um, finding it difficult to get in. You know, to to, to I <laughs> don't know how to put it, but like there was just a lot of different angles that you were exploring. So mm. uh, I imagine probably true of what I do that if you somebody isn't familiar with it and they just come in midpoint, then it takes a while to orientate themselves. And, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was useful. The, the podcast I happened to listen to last night were useful in that regard because um, mm -hmm. they were more. Uh, they were less information based and more like you were talking more yeah, yeah, yeah. about your perspective on things which is generally what interests me I mean I do like to get into information because mm -hmm. I like the details but it can take mm -hmm. so long like I wanted to ask you about what you think about socialism because and Fabianism because I grew up in a Fabian family I didn't know it until recently but um, yeah I, w I would like to get your take on that but not today because we've been on two hours already but do you just quickly do you have a take on Fabianism yes well uh, Fabianism is also something on my schedule I have to read the classics Sidney Webb and others I think uh, uh, Fabianism is uh, a bit um, mm, overemphasized in these conspiracy theory cycle uh, circles uh, I mean it's it's a it's a the, the the philosophers I despise most in this world, like Bertrand Russell, were Fabians. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I think they are. I think the Fabians are a bit demonized, but they are this uh, brand of uh, eugenics-oriented left, uh, which is always sugarcoating uh, a very sinister principles. But I would have to. I would have to go into literature. I mean, re I read uh, Herbert George Wells. I read Russell. I read a lot of people who were Fabians, but never read what they said about uh, uh, Fabian Fabianist movement or party uh, themselves. Mm. I, I do think it's a sinister political movement, but maybe maybe. I think they, they I, I don't know sit, situation in England, but I don't. F I think they still exist as a, as a registered party. Well, the Labour but Party well, itself yes. is Fabian, or at least it has. Yeah, uh, they infiltrated. Ah, they, well, they yes, created it. it. The, they didn't infiltrate it. They created it. Created it. Ah, the, yeah. that's it. Yeah. So, um, and that, as you know, uh, in terms of this, the archetypal thing that you talk about on your podcast about evil, the. Uh, evil always wears a mask of good. They they actually have the wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, on the, yes, <laughs> on that's, that's thing. fascinating. That that, that heraldic uh, image of theirs. Yes. Yeah, and and for me, it's. I mean, it was it was very interesting and a bit confounding to find out what you just said that the Fabian Society is the bugaboo of the right, because I hadn't even really heard of them, and I only started looking into them because I found out my grandfather was a founding <laughs> Fabian in our in our county in Hull. And so I thought, oh, well, let's find out about the Fabian Society. And so at a certain point, while I was finding out my own stuff, I, I hit upon mm -hmm. this other narrative, which is the one you're talking about, which um, it isn't necessarily false. I found the same with the Tavistock Institute. Like, if you mm -hmm. read the literature about the Tavistock Institute out there, you'll probably... I don't know about you personally, but I anyway would end up turning away, going, "Ah, I can't be bothered." It's just you know, it's just 
I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not convinced. It's not well researched. It's not well documented. It just sounds to me like like conspiracy theory, and you know, in the, in the worst sense. And and yet again, uh, with Tavistock as with Fabian, uh, the stuff I found was independent of all that stuff. And then I started to see, well, actually, that's that's really weird because these badly written books that seem to be badly researched are written from an emotional uh-huh. perspective they're not neutral uh-huh. they're, they're actually referring to these same facts that I'm uncovering so then it starts to look like this is, this is actually deliberate means to discredit information you know? because uh, certainly that's uh-huh. the effect uh-huh. it, the effect is like you said well I, I think the, the Fabian influence has been exaggerated well I mean that still may be true I'm not saying it isn't true but um, I I, I found out about the Fabian influence and how far-reaching it, it was by avoiding most of those sources and just just following, uh, you know, other leads and they just kept popping up. And so actually I could send you what I wrote. It probably might be helpful to you because it's... Mm-hmm. Um, I'll call mm-hmm. it Yorkshire is, is basically that and it doesn't refer to LaRouche or any of these dodgy mm-hmm. sources. Mm-hmm. Um that would be great. I would be very interested in this. Uh, and I would be very interested to, to hear your take on it, because, um, mm-hmm. yeah, because as I say, I don't often find researchers that I even want to talk to, much less, you know, collaborate with. So I'm mm-hmm. glad. I'm glad that we hooked up as we did. Likewise. And uh, can you tell me? Okay, we are already. Uh, <laughs> I guess overdue, but I would just ask you, maybe it's personal, you don't have to answer it, you said members of your family were Fabian society, but did you consider them to be bad people? Well, privately? Was, yeah, no, I mean I didn't, because I grew up with them mm-hmm. So, and it wasn't mm-hmm. as though I had an overtly abusive childhood I mean, as in, mm-hmm. I, I don't remember overt examples of abuse they were alcoholics, so it was it was uh-huh. highly dysfunctional um but uh, that doesn't need to mean anything evil. That's just no, weakness. it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. So that uh, that question is 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 a key one, and that's what my, I'm exploring in my own writings. Is that's why you know the question of of evil and conspiracy and all the rest of it where it arrived at my own doorstep. Um, it really and this did become it's still the most compelling question. This thing you addressed that evil almost always and if it's successful it always wears a mask of good well and that to me is 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 what is really wrong i mean that's the worst thing to me it's not so much the badness that's being Mm -hmm. done i can i can accept that at some level but that that it actually wears the mask of good i think that in a way that's more destructive than even the thing that's being concealed is the concealment that's my own experience and because it is reality Mm -hmm. distorting It, it you know, it gives you a false map for the territory, and you're following this, yeah, 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 yeah. this false map your whole life. And so that that's my experience. I don't think my my family were bad people, but I think that they would mm-hmm. they were well. I should say they because I don't know how many of them, but my grandfather and probably some of my uncles were were directly involved and complicit with horrific stuff, and probably including mm-hmm. organized mm-hmm. abuse. Even I mean, I I think that's even possible. Um, and uh, and th- th- they hid it. They, they 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 had a social persona that that was benevolent, socialist, cared mm-hmm. for common mm-hmm. people. I mean, I never believed that. I always thought they were hypocrites, but I didn't know how deep the hypocrisy went. I still don't. Yeah, that's that's really terrible. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, anyway, I would be I would be much interested to to, to read everything you can you can send my way about this this subject. Okay. Okay. You kind of sound like a little bit like Zizek Jr. I hope that's not an insult to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not Zizek. He's crazy, but he's, I think he's a benevolent guy. I think he's so. a Slovenian. I'm Croatian. We talk a uh, different language, but he he can speak Croatian also. Ah, uh, so I wasn't too far off the mark. No, no, no. It's it's. Uh, we were all. Uh, that was 
I don't know if you remember that country, Yugoslavia. I do remember, yeah, when it and split Yugoslavia up. broke up, and Slovenia is the westernmost republic. And Žižek, Žižek really, Žižek and Leibach are two most famous of their uh, exports. Okay, thank you for having me, and uh, I'm signing out, and uh, my warm regards to everybody listening to this.